Hi, welcome to part two of our webinar series about how to use FatDB. This part has to do with uh, demoing our read through and write back capabilities for, um, and I'm using a, uh, a memory cache uh, to do it. Uh, but this speaks to how easy it is to integrate our uh, FatDB technology with existing SQL Server. Uh, instances. So if you want to use SQL Server as a NoSQL database, um, then you import the data into uh, FatDB. If you want to um, you know, have a cache in front of SQL Server, you can uh, utilize FatDB as a cache. Um, and there are a, a couple other uh, really strong use cases for how you can really leverage your uh, SQL Server investment and um, give your enterprise application a lot of scale and capabilities that um, are really uh, unheard of on the uh, in the .NET world right now, and everything is essentially uh, manageable from a single uh, management studio, which is is pretty phenomenal. So, uh, why don't we get started, and I'll show you some uh, some neat capabilities. So, what you're looking at right now is I have defined. Uh, beforehand the product cache uh, store. And if you look right here, I selected, when I, when I um, set it up, I selected an in-memory cache for SQL and I provided the connection string. And if we look at the definition, uh, just like we did in part one, um, we uh, defined all the fields and um, the mappings and um, now we're good to go. So. Um, how does this actually work? Well, the cache that we have has uh, some intervals that you can um, that you can touch, and uh, essentially what that means is that you can define how long data stays fresh in the cache, and you can also define how often the cache will um, clean itself up, and that's the uh, the fresh window and the read interval that you see here. Um, there are also another, uh, you know, a couple other options that you can choose. But um, now let's go to the uh, little data application that I um, showed you guys in part one of this webinar. So if I were to, to basically look at FatDB as a cache, uh, essentially what I'm doing here is I'm telling this little data sample application to go ahead and, and look at the cache data. And as of right now, there isn't any. But if I were to hit this cache button, what it's going to do is it's going to um, ask uh, the, the product cache for um, 10 keys. And of course, nothing's in the cache right now, so those are going to um, be treated as cache misses. And what it's going to do is it's going to fetch that data from SQL Server and store it in our product cache. So let's go ahead and um, do that. So there you go. So now we have a bunch of data that is cached. So I just showed you um, read through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you write back. So I'm going to change this puce color to magenta and um, we're going to go ahead and update the cache. And if I hit refresh, you can see that, that uh, Magenta has been updated in the cache. Now, if I go ahead and hit query here, I actually selected the same uh, 10 records uh, on the SQL Server query, and boom, we didn't have to do any sort of export. It automatically propagated back to SQL Server. Now, our read through and write back capabilities are. Um, awesome when you want to keep your SQL Server data in sync with your um, NoSQL database. Um, you don't have to do that, but by doing that, um, you avoid any sort of inconsistencies between uh, your NoSQL uh, database and SQL Server. And that allows you to do things like leverage your SQL Server for things that it's really good at, like reporting and um, you know transactional stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, this gives you uh, some pretty great, uh, you know, real-time integration features. Now, there's another uh, thing that is coming in our near-term roadmap, um, and that is SQL Server triggers. So, uh, pretty soon, what you guys are going to see is uh, the full cycle, which means 
um, I am going to be able to update, say, a SQL Server table, uh, say the product table, and um, we can have triggers. The, the, the SQL DBA can install a trigger that essentially will update either the NoSQL database or the cache, which is, is pretty awesome, too, if you have um, data that uh, gets changed in a master SQL Server database and you want to propagate that back up to your NoSQL database or to your cache. So um, that's, uh, that's it. And uh, you've seen how easy it is to integrate with uh, SQL Server and how we can set up, uh, easily set up uh, uh, you know, products uh, in a uh, NoSQL database and uh, products in a uh, NoSQL cache. So the next, uh, th there are two other webinars that are uh, up and coming in this series. One is uh, I want to show you some of the other um, pieces of functionality that are really, really integral to the FatDB platform that allow you to uh, offload some of the things that, uh, that folks are used to uh, using SQL Server for and you know really freeing up SQL Server to do the kind of things that it does best. So uh, the next webinar will uh, discuss um, the work queue and the file management system and then I'm going to show you how phenomenally easy it is to add scale once you uh, you know once you run out of scale on your NoSQL database you're going to want to add um, you know more servers to it so how do you do that and that's going to be the uh, final part of this series thank you and I'll see you next time